Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let you bang. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? Hey, but welcome to a brand new MA Roasted podcast. Me, Adam Hunter. We got a great show on the, uh, today. We got Journey Newson, who is the. Uh, I'm watching his fights. One of the most underrated fighters I've seen in a long time. This dude is a star and a making uh, killer fighter. I met him in Vegas. We got him on the show. We have uh, Jasmine St. Clair, very famous adult film star. She'll be joining us uh, later, uh, as well as. Uh, undefeated fighter from uh, who's five and zero, uh, killer guy out of Cerro Longo, Justin Montalvo, uh, and Drew Mornay, who's uh, who's fighting uh, in uh, celebrity boxing coming up against Anthony Taylor. So we we got a stack show. But first, let me talk to the UFC star, Journey Newson. How's it going, man? Good. How you doing? Good. Now I met Journey in Las Vegas. Uh, you came to a show. I didn't even know you were in the UFC. Very unassuming guy. I mean, you're, you know, you're three foot two, so you're easy to miss. Uh, super nice guy. So we go out, and you come to a show, and it's me, my ex-girlfriend from like 10 years ago, this beautiful blonde dancer, a porn star uh, chick who I, who I slept with a while back, uh, who her, her mom, I think, did cocaine out of Fleetwood Mac's asshole, or maybe it's vice versa, and then like, and then a band, and a couple of other fighters, and we all went out for dinner, and uh, it was a great time. Uh, but I remember looking at you a couple times, you looking at me like, what the, where am I, what am I doing, what's going on? Was that your experience? Yeah, that, I've been to a few comedy shows, and uh, I mean, that one was the first one that I've been to in Vegas, and I don't know, yeah, just, it was, it was close, it was, it wasn't like a, a big, big uh, a comedy club or anything yeah. like that. Um, it was it was a cool experience. I mean, you were you were pretty hilarious, man. Honestly, on point. You're on point with most of those jokes, and oh, um, appreciate I'm it for sure. But then afterwards, like I'm, I remember the girl telling me like that, like she called me up one day. We had like I hooked up with her a while back. And then she heard her friend wanted to like watch me masturbate. Like just, hey, we want to watch you jerk off. And I was like, do I have to pay for this? And it was like, I was like, no, yes, maybe. And then I was like, okay. And then they both did. It was awkward. And it, we were explaining this and I'm telling this in front of you. And, and, then I, and, you're, and I'm like, well, would you have done it? You're like, well, how much are they going to pay me? It was, it was just a hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. Oh, good memory. <laughs> we had a hilarious moment, uh, a very Vegas moment, man. But let's get to you, man, because I had no idea. I remember asking you, I'm like, hey, I think I see some of your fights. And you're like, yeah, you know, the ones where I knocked the guy out or the ones that I got knocked out. <laughs> like, it's either or. It's either or, man. It kind of sucks, but, yeah, it's either or. One of us gets knocked out. It never goes to decision. <laughs> well, your, your, your last fight, uh, you got that the head kick. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. That first, was, first one. That was crazy because um, – Mm-hmm. Who was the guy? Randy Costa, you fought. Randy Costa, and, yeah. Awesome and, guy. Cool guy. And he did a weird thing where, like, well, what, what, what you talk, tell me, what would you have done differently? Because it was, it was quick. But what do you, I mean, I'm sure you watched it back. What did you do wrong? I watched that so many damn times. <laughs> I hate it every time I watch it. <laughs> now, um, uh, he, I think he did his homework uh, quite well. Uh, he noticed in my last fight, uh, the one before that, when I knocked out uh, Domingo Pilarte, uh he kicked me. He had kicked me. Yeah. Um, practically in the same spot. And I think that him and his coaches did their homework well um, because I blocked that kick. He threw a one-two, and I think he switched to southpaw as he threw that one-two and threw that kick up. And you see I slipped the one-two. And I start to block the kick, but then it just goes right over my hands. Yeah, right over. So uh, 
I mean, now, obviously, like, my hands are a lot more higher for, like, the past year. That's all I've been working on is making sure, like, both hands are high enough to block uh, head kicks and stuff like that. But he did his homework, and I can't, you know, I can't blame him or anything. Like, you know, it was, it was his time to shine, and, you know, he shined. Oh, I, remember, I remember, like, I remember looking at you, and you just were like, fuck. Uh, did you – Oh, look, so did, – did, did you go out at all, or, or was it, like, did you did – No, you no, I didn't – I didn't know what happened. Like, I remember slipping to one, two, and then all of a sudden the ref is waking me up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck, damn it. I was so. It was like, a time tra- it was like almost like time traveling. Yeah, <laughs> it was like a time travel. It yeah. kind of sucks, but I mean, you live by the sword and you die by the sword. So well, it's also one of those things where, like, I mean, and that, I don't know anybody in the world that could have taken that kick under 170 that that wouldn't have happened to. Um, yeah. And it was like, and I think it's a very correctable mistake. So it's not like you went out there and got dominated for five rounds and you lost every minute of the fight. It was just like one kick. So yeah. is that easier to, to digest than if you would have gotten like wrecked by a guy or is it, you got, cause are you just like, all right, I got caught. Now I know my lesson kind of thing. Yeah. Right now it's, um, I got caught and I know my lesson because it was one, it was just, it was too fast. Um, I can take a hit pretty well. Um, a lot of people say that they can take hits. Um, but almost everybody is – if a kick you, – you can't take a kick. That's bone. You know, there's there's no way that you're going to sit here and, and take that high level of a kick and survive. So, uh, I know that I can take a hard hit. It's just that I need to make sure that I am well protected, especially for those long guys. Not only protected, but backing up was uh, a huge issue for me that – I'm going to try to fix for the, for the next fight. Like, cause he led me backwards. Well, the fight before it, like against uh, Domingo, that fight was like, it was hilarious because they were, I love it when you prove the commentators wrong. Cause you go out there and he throws that kick, you get rocked. And they were like, journey's in trouble. He's, he's, he's in a lot of trouble. And right when Rogan said that it was boom, you had a perfect right guy went out. Uh, yeah. And that was, what, 42 seconds. That was crazy. And it was, like, in the guy's hometown. The guy bowed so- to you beforehand. Like, he was very confident. And that must have been was – that, was that your, the high light of your career so far? Uh, yeah, I mean, because it was in the UFC, I'd say it was the highlight. Was the, the most highlight knockout I've had? Probably, probably not. Um, that dude was, you know, pretty big. He had – not only uh, height, but he had a reach advantage over me. So did Randy Costa, but Domingo had, like, a, a significant amount of reach and height over me. Um, so I think he, he kind of came in after that kick um, with, uh, a, like, a less risk tolerance. Yeah. You know, he got caught pretty, pretty hard and pretty easily. Him, when he backed me up on that cage, I can hear my corner saying, circle off, circle off. But, like, at that time, I knew he was going to rush in and, uh, my natural instinct was just to faint that right hand or faint that left hand and throw the overhand right because he was softball. We were always going to look for that that right hand because he was softball. It just came a lot more quicker than we thought it would. By the way, Jasmine's going to join us for a little bit. Then we're going to talk to Jasmine. Uh, we're here with Journey Newsom, who's uh, in the UFC. He's got a big fight coming up. Um, and then the fight before that, your first fight you took on like two days' notice against a fucking stud. And you look, you got hit with like, nine spinning back elbows, spinning back fists, sp- and nothing. That's what I think you may have had too much confidence in your chin because you, yeah. all, you just kept going <laughs> and going. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Like, you just the, – the commentators, you were losing the fight, but the commentators were, were just talking about how great you were because they couldn't believe yeah. how great you were doing. Well, because it was, the, it was a short fight uh, notice. It was against uh, a top player who's at 45 now. Why? I can't remember his Carlo, name. Carlo Ramos, who you fought. Yeah, Carlo Ramos. Yeah, uh, he's at 45 now, dominating a little bit over there. And, yeah, he, I ate a few spinning uh, back elbows that one dropped me, one cut my upper lip. I had to get, like, six stitches for that. But it did kind of raise my confidence, like, oh, okay, I can take a hit for sure. Um, kicks are different than elbows. I know that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's the same, you know, it's the same thing. Like, I need, I need to learn how to keep my hands up. I need to know, like, not to go uh, too far forward in and catch those spinning elbows and stuff like that. But that's even you know, so, fight, like, they were commenting on how good I was. It was um, awesome. It was, it was a good fight. 
to lose because it was short nose and it was because it was my UFC debut and it was because like this guy already had four or five fights in the UFC prior to facing me. So uh, it, it's Saint Clair, by the way, was in I used to when I was in high school, ECW wrestling would come on. I don't know if you remember this. It might be before your time, Journey. It was the it was wrestling that was banned in everywhere but like Philadelphia and Long Island. Like anywhere, that's the only places that would, and it would come on the MSG channel. And the, the crowds would bring frying pans to the wrestlers. And then they would hit each other with frying pans. And it was like the first type of wrestling that I ever saw. Because I was used to Hulk Hogan and Macho Man. And, dude, yeah. and, and this was like, you know, nails through the face. And just, I mean, craziness. Like, I've never, tables and shit on fire. And all of a sudden, Jasmine St. Clair is in the ring uh, with... How did you get become? How did that happen? How did you come? How did you even learn how to wrestle? How did I get into the ring that night, or how did I? Like, just how did you learn how to become a wrestler? All I mean, yeah. um, I actually grew up watching wrestling, and my grandmother would be talking to the TV set. I'm like, who is she talking to? Like, I went in there one day, I saw it, and like, I just fell in love with the adrenaline rush. Like, by nature, I am a thrill seeker. That's what I like. I'm a, I've never had an addiction in my life except like speeding on a motorcycle. Um, I would say like going into that ring, getting slammed and like do getting a pile driver from off the top rope, which is now outlawed. I mean, it's just a special adrenaline rush. You can probably understand that journey because um, yeah. of what you do for a living. But with ECW, I felt beyond grateful. Um, I was an ex-PW wrestling before. And at that time, I was transitioning careers. So I had gone ahead and I started um, training to wrestle. But because of my size, always, I was always used as a manager. Um, but I did a few like mixed tag matches in my time, like with Shari Martel, uh, completely oh. lovely woman, by the way. It was so yeah. sad. Um, you know, it's one thing I could say is if I did not make a bunch of money with pro wrestling, I definitely got paid with the entertainment. And the stories. I saw, I saw one girl, this like Jack, I think she was like half black or black girl, put you like in a, a running yeah, so, dog choke. Or, yeah, that uh, was scary. That <laughs> was very scary because my, my dress, my mom was there that night and I had this dress on. It's when I was like, I used to be like a 36 double D. I'm like a 34 B now, 34 C. And um, this thing just came off my strap. I'm like in the middle of the ECW arena, like half topless. I'm like, Oh shit. Oh, no. she, she put me, Yeah. Yeah. Book. <laughs> I mean, she just slammed me down. I didn't know if she could pick me up. I, I knew she was stronger than most men, um, both emotionally and physically, I guess, but she just like pushed me up there. I'm like, Oh shit. Then whoosh, it just happened so fast. You know, you don't really think about it, but that's the beauty of it. It's like, it's like doing a wheelie on a motorcycle, like in the freeway or something. It's just the same adrenaline rush. Well, no, you're definitely a thrill seeker. And I mean, <laughs> I, I, you've lived the life of 500 people. I, 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 I can't even like, I'm like, well, where do I even begin with this interview? Like, I, 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 like do I, it's like, I mean, it's, it's, your life has been crazy. Journey, your life, because I, you know, when, when we went out, and I, I don't know if you know Kayla Page, uh, Jasmine, uh, me, and, mm -hmm. you know, Kayla Page's. Mm -hmm. uh, she's this girl, Kayla. She's an adult star. You're in the AVN Hall of Fame. And she, Journey came to a show when my ex-girlfriend was in the crowd with this other girl who's an adult star that I slept, hooked up with. And we all started talking. And then Journey was there. It was like a, it was just a fun interaction. He was like, where the fuck am I? Because I don't know. You, I mean, he's actually the, the size of he is, he is in Zoom. That's exactly how, how big he is. No, kidding. Um, but it, great, great, great guy. But Journey... You're, um, I was looking at your, looking at your life and you were, uh, your, your dad, your mom was a drug addict and you were put in foster care with your siblings at three years old. Yeah. Right around three years old up until I want to say like 16, 17. Wow. So uh, in and out, always in and out of foster care. Um, my dad was, uh, the, the, you know, a hard worker trying to maintain the family, but um back then like my mom's white my dad's black um his word against her word is you know it's never it, it was never his word was was true so um you know a lot of times we were in and out of foster care which kind of sucked and everything but um you know it, it's definitely made me who i am today 
I mean, it, was, it was a hard, like, you would have to pretty much from, to, we would go to high school or middle school, high school, back to foster care. Uh, yeah. And, we, that, and that's where you would well, sleep? We went to different schools um, all through uh, middle school and high school. Wow. Wow. Uh, and then you started taking, what, Taekwondo and Jiu-Jitsu at, like, 12? Yeah, we, my, well, there was, like, a time frame. There was always a time frame, really, of when uh, our, our dad had us. Um, and he put us in Taekwondo, me and my little brother, for a little bit. But then, um, like, clockwork. Like, my, my mom would act out and, or run away because, you know, she, she needed her fix or something. And my dad's at work. Now there's no parent at the house for the kids. So, you know, CPS rolls on. And um, that was it, basically, for Taekwondo. I got up to Orange Belt, which is pretty cool. I got <laughs> Orange Bell. That's like you know. Well, the you got into the UFC. You got into the <laughs> UFC. I think you got above Orange Bell. You got into the and a lot of people would have got into crime and all kinds yeah. of. Yeah, and I there's there's time in my life where there was um, a little bit of crime and stuff. Like I sold I sold a little bit of weed. You know, back in the day, I got caught for it. It was right next to a school, which kind of sucked. And um, you know, I, I did my community service, did my probation, or whatever, and I left that all in the past. But um. You know, now, you know, this is where we're at. We're, we're in the fight game. We're, we're pretty deep in the fight game. Um, we're at the point where we can start to level up and, you know, just forget about all those bad, bad times that we've had. Start looking for good now, times. Jasmine, now, Jasmine, um, you went to Columbia. Yeah, I graduated from Columbia University, but uh, like Journey, I too had a few things on my record. Um, the only difference is that they were felonies. Uh, so I just took it a notch, a notch up from you. I, I went up to you, I'm sorry. Um, it was just insider trading, like some bullshit like, uh, oh, did I just say that word? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it was just, yeah, it's just like insider trading. It's not a big deal. And like $3 million. Okay. So <laughs> Okay, so you made three million on an insider trading deal? Um, sort of. I mean, it was just kind of like a, yeah, sort of. Yeah, I, I walked away with not that much. Actually, the money that I walked away with, I ended up spending on the lawyer. So, if you really think about it, it really wow. didn't pay, and um, it was really stupid. But you know, it's I, I grew up in a pretty good background with my mom. I went to private schools. I didn't come from money. This is why I, I just, I really studied hard to get to where I was. And, you know, I don't know. It's just when you grow up really um, as a good child. Yeah. Um, I mean, I grew up listening to heavy metal and I spoke like five languages by the time I was um, 19. Uh, I don't like I wasn't dating till I was 16 or 17 and you just grow up you kind of go out into the world so you get seduced by different things like my first boyfriend he was an Irish mobster he was a Westie so it's like this whole thing I was his whole underworld seduced me completely but yeah we tried to date a few years ago and I ended up getting a restraining order against him um, you then I called him, him. You, went huh? back, you went back to him to your first boyfriend um, he was the second one. I was cheating on this other guy that worked at the record store with me and I met him and then I dumped him. <laughs> then I got back with him years later because I felt really bad about it. And we went on a few dates, but I think he changed a lot. Um, I right, forget about and, him. Uh, all right, yeah? so, forget about him. I don't care about this guy. But so you I were, care about him. I want him back now. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so, because I, I watched a little bit of your interview with Vince Russo, and I hate watching people's interviews because then I feel like I don't want to ask, then I don't get the questions because now I know all the answers, you know? So I, it's hard to watch an interview, but I watched- That's not it. always true. I'm sorry, Adam, to cut you off, but that's not always true because you don't know how comfortable I felt at that point um, saying what I did. So it was probably a different version of something. Okay. Probably, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not as. I'm not that good at this. But okay, so, so I'm getting. I'm learning. But uh, but the, but the thing is, is your boyfriend was always at the strip club every night. The mobster. And no, the other one. No, 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 no. The um, the idiot I met at the record store. Uh, he always at the strip club, and you were like seduced by the whole strip. You're like, why? Why is he choosing the strip club over me? And then you became a stripper. Yeah. Right. Right. So to kind of pay 
you know, paid through college, Columbia, and then you're at your, then you're at the strip club, and then somebody comes in and says, "Hey, I can get you into porn." Is that how that went, or no? It wasn't quite that simple. I mean, you hear all these stories about girls who get talked into one of those things. I'm not one of them. I mean, it was all my idea from the get go. Anything outrageous that's gone on in my life, I can guarantee you that was 100% me, and I take full accountability for it. I mean, my life is half over already. So I don't really care. So anything I've done, I will fess up to. I will even tell you where the bodies were buried. Um, so <laughs> no, I, I just, I saw the feature dancers that would come in there and they were really pretty. Uh, that was the nineties and girls were really glamorous. They had like their nails and hair done. They had boob jobs. And uh, at that point, I was already in the playbook book of lingerie and a few other things. And I was dabbling around with uh, B-rated films. I did like one under a different name, but I was selling uh, vintage toys and collectibles every weekend. So I oh, basically, so. yeah, it, I, I still do sort of. Um, and that's where I got into the whole horror film thing. And I was talking to a lot of the girls like at the signings, asking them like what they made. So it was kind of cool, like seeing these girls dance on stage and you had these idiot. I mean, these, um, these people there, like giving them money, right, they go right. strip for 20 minutes and sell stuff. So I decided to call the one girl's manager. The, it was this duo named Fire and Ice. Uh, they're really super pretty. But back in the 90s, what sold were freak shows. Were like were super flash huge. dancers you worked at or scores or what, what was it? Oh, I got fired from scores, but we hired. It was flash dancers. You flat, yeah, I used to live across the street from there. Literally, I lived on 53rd and 8th. Did you see me? I don't know. I, I remember Rebecca Wilde would, would go there. She was like the big one. I, I don't think I saw you. I remember seeing you, I think, on the flyer. Because they'd always have no, like you, flyers. You saw me when I was a house girl, I'm sure. I looked a little different. Like I had bangs. I don't know. I dated a girl named Tatiana there. Uh, oh, I know. Cut, what, the bartender? No, from Russia. I think she became a bartender. Tatiana, you give me green card. What? Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, that was the one I think you I You don't, I, you get me pregnant, I kill you. My brother kill you if you don't marry yeah. me. That I'm pretty sure that was the one. That was, yes. <laughs> I don't know. They all sound the same. I'm sorry. <laughs> sounded just like the girl. Holy shit. Uh, and I think she became the bartender there. But I used to live across the street from there. And I would see all the girls. Uh, we, remember, we, oh, we, me and my friends would have meetings over there. Uh, it was like free. Uh, it was like five, it was free before six or something. And we you were worked like, there when I was a house girl. I just looked with? a lot different. I was very, I was very insecure. I wasn't like out of my shell yet. And then I took a public speaking class at Columbia University. Then I started backpacking to my boyfriend. Um, then I broke up with him at the KISS convention or something. Something crazy happened. Oh, then uh, when I started speaking to the features, basically I was free to like do whatever I wanted to. And, um, you know, so I called his manager and he told me the different ways you, you, know, you make money as a feature. Then I just, you know, went with it. Well, You're only going to live once. But you like, went all the way because you were in, I looked at, you, at, at some of your, your movies, but the big movie was uh, The World's Biggest Gangbang 2, right? Oh, now, that thing? Now, I, haven't seen, <laughs> I haven't seen the first one. So uh, is it like The Matrix where you're not going to understand? Uh, I'm, Don't no. even watch number one. It's not worth it. Number, okay, so you were in the world, 300 men in, in 24 hours. No, 301. What are you talking about? 301 men. Oh, come on. Now, <laughs> but then you said it was all a scam. It was 30 men, but then they came, some guys came in with mustaches or they shaved their head. They had different haircuts. Like, like what, t tell us what happened in this. Is, was this, a, what happened in the world's biggest gang man? And how sore were you? I mean, you, you must, uh, that must've been rough. Uh, did they all have sex with you or, cause you said, you said that you were gonna, uh, and, and who, who pitches that to you? Like, how do you, like, how does, how did that, that happen? That was my idea. Are you crazy? No, so you said, I want to be the, in the, 300 men. Well, I saw that that, um, <laughs> that woman. <clears throat> I saw that woman who did the previous one, and I'm like, I could do that. That's what I said, okay? And that's, that's it was my idea. Okay. Yeah, so, then, okay. So, then, so then you line up 300 guys. They have to get tested and everything. Do, do, you, do, you have, do you have to, how many people applied? Was there like an application process? Yeah, you felt, you didn't fill out one. You mean, what, where were you when this <laughs> shit was going on for sure? I'm yeah, I you filled out one, what the fuck? They should have looked like you, but they didn't. I, um, no, uh, see, they don't look like Journey or like you. So that was the big problem. There are a few good looking guys. So the one guy that was a Marine, he came to my one woman show like a couple of years ago. I did not recognize him. I'm like, dude, what the hell happened? I think he like got married or something. So he had married life going on that look. So 
the other oh. guy I got their applications while I was feature dancing and um let's see. Yeah, and like when I was on Howard Stern. Yeah. Um, who I completely adored growing up because he played heavy metal on his radio show. Right. And he had long hair. So then what else? So yeah, I mean, there are different guys there. Some of them look like they got out of like an insane asylum or like the LA County <laughs> but, but they did. Funny though. But I mean, do they all like go? That was the craziest one there though. <laughs> Uh, but do they all go in once and then I didn't watch it. I got to admit, I didn't watch it. Do they just have like, or they have to, they have to climax or is it just like, uh, is it, do they have to, like, is there like a, a time limit? I need mean, to have 300 people. That's a, how does that work? I'm honestly asking you. Okay. So like, if you touch me, I would count that as penetration. Oh, come on. I was not very nice to these guys. Come on. I mean, look, I had, I had a nail appointment to get to that afternoon that I was late for. I actually missed it. Then I was meeting up with friends at the Rainbow Bar and Grill after, so that was my agenda and to get my check. So the um, <clears throat> there were like five guys up there at a time. If they can't get their shit up, that's not my problem. There were fluffers there, so a lot of them like were stimulated or they reached a climax to eat before they even got to me. Oh, there's this really what there's something really funny. There are these pizza delivery guys that came in from San Francisco, two of them. Yeah, and. <laughs> One of them, like, I I guess he climaxed way before he got to me, like, on his buddy's hand. Oh, my God. Oh that was God. so funny. <laughs> but it was like now, a circus. Can yeah. any of them try to win you? Because I know me. I'm, I'm such an idiot that I'd be, I would try to win you over. I'd be like, no, yeah. she's going to like me. Like, so if I was on the line, say, even I was 37, did they make eye contact? Did they tell you, I love you? Did anybody, was anybody freak you out, like, take it too serious? Or, or were they all just like just I'm next like how it was it a line was there like did you have a break yeah, there was a queue there was a queue mm -hmm. yeah was there a, a water breaks and everything it was there an icer yeah, yeah somebody ice you up and like yeah yeah oh, wow with a hose kind of thing like make sure that cause, yeah no, no. Ice. Oh, ice wow like look I do like all my madness stone cold sober because then you can't if you don't do shit if you don't do the stuff Stone Cold Sober, then you're never really going to live to talk about the stuff. And like one of the reasons I think um, that I'm single is because I focus all my life on doing <clears throat> like fun, cool things. And if there's a class in something, chances are I probably took it. Yeah. And just like rebranding myself and doing things all the time. So like, that's all I care about. Like I'm, I'm more in love with, you know, the Jasmine thing I've done and performing on my one woman show on, you know, live, that's what I'm in love with more than anything else. You had um, and that's, it's a really amazing. screwed up, it sounds narcissistic, but honestly, that's the type of thing where you pour like your life and your passion into it. So, you know, I just go with the flow of things. I don't have kids. I don't, I never wanted kids. I have a kitten, I have motorcycles and, you, you know, know, I have my, my like friends. You everything that I like. You like act, you're into acting, heavy metal, wrestling, sex, uh, like you, you've had such a, I like I mean, sex. Motor, maybe you don't like sex, but whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've had it, <laughs> stripping. I, I, I tried stripping. I failed miserably uh, when I was in my twenties. Uh, I, I did, I did one, two bachelorette parties and I, I quit because the girls were too wild. They were like trying to get me, they were, and I, I, I kind of liked it. That was the problem. I actually liked it. And I'm like, I see where this is going and this is not, I'm not going to end up in a healthy place. But well, no, but I, what, what, but what I did was what I, what I heard you say to Vince Russo was that you wanted to get to your rock bottom because you thought if you were at your rock bottom, I forgot how you phrased it, but then you couldn't, no one could hurt you because you had already got there. And I could, I could identify with that. Cause a part of me, like, if you get to super fucking low, there's, there's only one way, which is up. Is that how you kind of look at it? No, I don't think that's a term I use. I, it's gotta be some kind of weird elaborate phrasing that I use that may not necessarily have um, suited the true narrative of anything which is more than likely because at that time when I did the interview, um, I will say I was not co as confident as I am now, or I have been since I wrote the one woman show or my autobiography, which I've not published yet. Um, I would say that I did not have complete control of the narrative at that point. Um, so well, I don't know what I said. A crazy guy too. But, Vince is a crazy, Vince is, I don't know if you know Vince Russo, but he, he like took wrestling. He's a very controversial figure in the wrestling world. Yeah, I, I think he's great. Um, I mean, I never hit a rock bottom in my life really, except for once I was homeless living in my SUV. Um, I, I married someone and then I didn't know that like what the laws were that he could still write a check even though we're like separated and take money out of the account. So I was living in like my SUV 
with six cats. Um, I stay, I like, I could have called people to stay somewhere or I could have, I don't go calling people for help. I don't do that type of thing. Um, Me neither. Hmm? Me neither. See, exactly. You get it. And it's just, it's not right to impose your bullshit on people, even though they want you to. So right. I literally lived on the California coast, like in Malibu. Well, how old were you? Peaceful. And then I just kind of like, you know, from there, I just, other things just started coming to me. I was transcribing interviews for heavy metal magazine in Brazil. I was speaking to people there um, how, about like coming How old there. were you when you were homeless? Hmm? How old were you when you were homeless? Um, let's see, 30, um, 35 or 34. You were already in the AVN Hall of Fame? No. No. Oh, so it was, it, was, it was before you were like a Hall of Famer? Or it was like, or it was like when you were doing dorm days? Was it kind of when you were acting? It was that? after that. No, no, no. I, the thing is, I could have gotten myself out of it sooner, but I just think I needed to just crack the shell to see, you know, what would happen. Because I wasn't like filthy homeless living there. I had, I had some money. And then um, I really cared more about like my cats having food and then just making a plan. It was also a stolen SUV that I took off this like Ford motor, Ford, you know, Ford, they have this like OJ Simpson cars, whatever they are. You, 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 wait, wait, yeah, it wait, was a white one too. <laughs> wait, you the car. wait, you stole the SUV? Yeah. So then, um, then after that, uh, I got a phone call from Brazil to go there to work on a heavy metal show. And then I also got a phone call from the um, sheriff's station to return the car. So I went to Brazil. I have family there and everything was, it was uphill from there. I was homeless for maybe about a month, but I had an Equinox gym membership. So I would go in there and shower. Um, you know, I had money here and there. I was still selling like dolls and stuff online, but I just needed to know, like, look, I could have called any madam to, to go make money, but I don't need to do that shit. I don't need to make a comeback in porn because Jasmine's done like so much more past that. There's no need to go looking back on that. I don't really keep up on porn. I have some adult film stars on my web, my, uh, my podcast, but it's mostly like all type of wrestlers, comedians, anyone interesting, like Mr. Skin was on there and he's really hot, by the way. Um, you know, people like that, because that's what interests me. I throw a few people in there from the industry that I think could actually construct a full sentence. Um, that brings something to the table. Right. Uh, J Journey. Uh, so... By the way, uh, when's your next fight, by the way? Yeah. My, my next fight is May 7th, uh, UFC 274 up in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, wow. Wait, that is, wait, is that the one with uh, Chandler? Yeah, that's a huge card. That's Ferguson versus Chandler. Wow. Ferguson. And then also Gaethje versus Oliveira, right? Uh, Gaethje versus Oliveira is on there as well. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a big card. Now, I watched your first fight, by the way, and I'm jumping. I have the worst ADHD you can see. So I'll, I'll go from your homelessness to, the, to your rear naked choke. You had the guy at a rear naked choke uh, in the third round. You're a, a brown belt. You were down two rounds. What? How did he get out? No, no, it was a uh, guillotine. Guillotine, guillotine, yeah. yeah. How, did he, how did he get? Was it just the grip? Was it too wet? He was uh, taller than me, too. Not by a lot. Uh, not like Domingo was as tall as him but um he was he was pretty tall and what he did was he um stepped on his tippy toes which made him elevate let me see if i can make that right made him elevate like this which basically takes the pressure off the choke um i was in full guard so i didn't have the angle to uh submit him which kind of sucks you almost uh, had it yeah if i readjust it if i would have opened up my guard um uh, readjusted to half guard um, yeah, it would have been, it would have been a choke and I would have finished him making it upset. Then you had him hurt with 30 seconds left. He was stumbling, but did you know you had him hurt? No, I, <laughs> I didn't know I had him hurt. Um, it was my UFC debut. Um, he, I kicked him, I leg kicked him a few times, um, in between rounds or not in between rounds, uh, first round, second round, third round, that third round is when he started to, uh, feel it. And I seen him stumble, but I swear I thought it was like, oh, come, come closer just so he can throw his two at me. Uh, I thought he was to me into his cross um, at the end of the uh, third round. But now that I look back at it, yeah, he was, he was injured, and I probably should have attacked that leg the last 30 seconds. Have you spoken to your mom? I have not, honestly. Since, since, since you were <laughs> Mother's Day is coming up, like, in the next few months, and um, 
I've I haven't talked to her in probably a couple years. I know she's uh in Georgia. Um I don't know where she is in Georgia. Uh we haven't talked in a couple years. Not that, you know, I we just like each other and like I, I love my mom um sincerely, but um I literally like don't know where she's at and I don't have a phone number. I had the same issue. I haven't seen my mom since I was three. And then I was in a mental hospital and then she went to Canada. And then I contacted her once when I was 21 and she hung up on me. And it was like, it was, that was the worst. I, I cause you know, was, I thought I was over it. You think you're over it. And right. then all of a sudden you just, all this emotion that you didn't even know was there. I'm just, and it was right up to 9-11. I was in New York. It was brutal. But Oof. I, but, and, and I don't, you know, I, you know, when you see it, look, I was telling my therapist, like, you know, you get to a bump in the road, you either go over it or you go around it. You don't stop. So it's like, you, you know, maybe you slow down a little bit, but uh, if you're being very literal. What's up, people? Football might be over for the season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From the latest odds, totals, player performance props, to where the next fire coach is going to land, Bet Online is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. Now head over to their website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code CLNS50 to get started. It's not just basketball, but online is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right to the Olympic coverage. And it's the best in the business, okay? From sports right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, BetOnline is your number one online wagering destination. BetOnline, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. BetOnline. Where the game starts. Um, now, your, your your parents, Jasmine, um, are they still together? Were they? Have they been supportive of you? Were they? Were they what's um, home? Has it been hard for them? My father passed away when I was twenty one years old of lung cancer. Wow, um, my mom, she she's supportive of wrestling. Uh, I don't think she really knows much of anything else. Um, she. Uh, you know, with acting and stuff like that. She's been to, um, she came to a lot of, uh, let's see, she was on set before when I worked in New York and some things. She was on the side of the deuce as well. Uh, she came to some of my plays. She came to an improv show that I did as well because I took, like, I took improv for, like, three years of my life. Wow. Or four years. It was really great because it helps with acting. It's not necessarily comedy, and people totally forget that. Journey, I just have to ask. I'm so sorry. How tall are you? I am 5'5". Five five. <laughs> no, he was saying something about tippy toes. I thought of Gene Simmons, but okay, interesting. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but, he's, but he's jacked. I mean, he's, he's, his legs are like, he looks like. I want to go to the show May 7th. I've never, I've not been to like a UFC fight, but. You've never, you've uh, seen, Journey, you, what about, you, you married? You have a girlfriend? <laughs> No, I have a girlfriend now. I have a cat. Do you have an extra, you have an extra ticket for Jasmine? I, I mean, think uh, UFC fighters get four tickets, so um, I got to double check on that. But, yeah, I have a ticket for her if she wants to go. Yeah, I'll definitely connect with you after the show for sure because you're okay. uh, it's interesting. But he has a cat, which is cute. I don't know if I'll take a cat to a UFC fight, though. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really funny because, like, when I first went on Springer in the 90s, uh, my mom then got a call from my cousin, who I knocked in the mouth, like, about a few months after this. Uh, they were saying, yeah, well, you know, she was on there, and she had a street name, Jasmine. My mom's calling me with this whole thing. And bear in mind, it's my mom. This is the same woman who told me that when she was at a hotel in Spain, she smiled with the concierge and was in her room. Then later on, he took all these sheets and came flying from – the courtyard into her room so that story keeps changing over the years so why were you on jerry springer by the way because <laughs> i can I know, but what, uh, was that, what was the topic um, okay so the first time i went on um it's when i was like before i was really feature dancing feature dancing on the circuit so they would they would pre-plan a lot of this stuff and it was uh the whole scenario was i was um I wanted to strip or pose nude and my boyfriend on the show, who I just met seconds before. Oh, uh, huh? <laughs> yeah, right? It is all staged. It's basically all staged. hundred percent, yeah. But, you know, here, I'll tell you what they do to you, though. They'll try to make, they make everyone sign a waiver so you can't sue them if you get your ass kicked. There's a really artistic way around that. I would just gap away with the makeup artist and all this stuff. So somehow I always manage to never sign like a waiver. So nothing ever happened to me. 
Nice. Uh, so that was the first one. Then over and over, I went back on. I was one of his highest rated guests. Like I totally forgot about those shows. And I have clippings of it in my one woman show because there are a lot of young girls that come to that and they get all fascinated with this 90s culture. So I'm sitting, you know, sitting up one night watching, doing something on the computer, something probably constructive. And at least I hope. And uh, I got this text from my friend who I was in improv with at Second City. She's like 24 now. And not everyone knows about your past, even in they're in an improv trip with you, but they don't care. So she's like, I just saw you on Vice and Dark Side of the 90s. I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, in the wrestling. No, no not Dark Side of the 90s. Uh, the first episode, tra oh. Trash Talk TV. So they put me in like the, the commercials for it, then the beginning of it. I had no idea. Then I found it. I'm like, oh, cool, there I am, awesome. Wow. So they keep playing it over and over. So I just feel as though this whole 90s pop culture, and I wouldn't call it pop culture, I would call it shock culture era, is coming back. Because what do we have on TV right now with shit getting canceled, you know? It was the, honestly, I think it was the best era in some ways because there wasn't social media. And it, it was like, like bands, like there are things that you couldn't happen today, like, like the 86 Mets or even like Dennis Rodman's whole life, or, uh, you yeah. know, all these things, the Limp Bizkit. I watched the Woodstock 99, which was horrible. But if there was social media right now, either it would get shut down, or it was just shit that, like, there would be all different, two people have different, you know, opinions on it. And so it was sort of like, I, I miss going to a concert where everyone isn't like fucking this. Or, right. Or isn't everyone. that annoying? Like, that's the beauty of existing before the internet. They didn't have that. And like, seriously, when I see people doing that shit, like if they, they're taping you doing something, it's like, I want to smash their freaking knuckles. Well, okay, out of their hand. I'm gonna on that. So I, I Googled your name recently, uh, which is, you, you huh? Google, when you Google your name, it's like crazy, but you want to fight Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, oh, that you, bitch, Jesus Christ. He looks like the fucking kitchen staff at Hooters. He's such a little bit, I just like, ooh, okay. But you were but you were on like a TMZ or one of those like big websites, uh, but it's saying that you want to fight Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> like, so all I said is I want to just he's just freaking annoying. Like he yeah. is the epitome of what's wrong. I'm gonna tell you what the problem is. So you have someone like Should Knight, okay? Yeah. I know I'm like all over the place, but this is I promise this is gonna make sense. You have someone like Should Knight that sells this like gangster fantasies to these white suburban kids while he's actually lived the reality of it, like the health issues, the drugs, um, the fights, the brawls, the violence, and now jail. Then you have some jackass piece of shit from bumfuck Ohio who thinks he's like gangsta. He looks like a damn shaved bird. You know, remember Napoleon Dynamite? Yeah. He looked like John Heater. Right. And with that freaking hairdo. Then he's with that hot girl, okay? So you look like the kitchen staff and the fucking, the wait staff dating. That's what it looks like. So. Then he's going around like, I just can't, I just have a problem with people that think they're like super badasses and this and that with this whole image. It's just, I don't know what it is with him. I just think it's this whole thing. And I just, I can't stand it. It's just people that live this life that there's something that they wish they were and they're not. Like the people that would probably guess that they think they're I mean, UFC fighters and they're not. Fucking, you've been, I mean, Journey, you've been in and out of a team. I couldn't imagine in Washington State, right? I mean, uh, Oregon. In Oregon, and your dad, your dad was a pro boxer. Yeah. Uh, so, and he, and he was it? Did it kill him to have how many kids? Four. Did it, did it kill him to have four kids in and out of the custody, in and out of child custody? I mean, that, that must have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It definitely like you know wrecked him a little bit for sure. Um, he's he's a family man who uh, wants to you know keep the whole family together and stuff like that. Uh, my mom's had her issues uh, with, with drugs and uh, her own family abuse from when she was a kid and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, those those two connecting um, weren't the, the best idea, right? <laughs> so, but it brought, you know, four kids out of it and... Uh, but now is he coming to your fights? Is he totally supportive of you? He's, he's supportive for sure, but he knows, you know, the, the, the consequences and the risk. Of, of fighting he was a boxer and he developed a, a tumor which is why he stopped fighting it was because was of a tumor and uh they got rid of the tumor and everything but uh he didn't want to go back because at that point he, i think he had a uh, uh, my older sister and my older brother so he already had two kids um he was kind of already out of boxing on his way out from the tumor what was, the, what, what was his record he was 20 
23 and 3, I want to say. He's 23 uh, and 3. Is he telling you to keep your fucking hands up? I must kill him. As a boxer, I mean, is he like, what are you doing? Why are your hands down here? Well, I mean, he's a boxer, so he's not a great boxer. It's true. So, like, he's, up and he's always trying to, uh, he's always telling me to keep my hands up, but kicks, he doesn't know. So. Okay, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> About kicks. And, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, like this has has been resolved to this now. Like why now, we've. Have, why didn't you put you in, in wrestling in high school? You've been perfect. Oh, I I bitch about that every time I'm on the phone with him. Definitely, like the one thing that you probably should have put me in um, was either boxing or wrestling. One because he was a boxer. I know he can't tell the future and what his kids are going to do, but I mean, Taekwondo could have been the last resort. Yeah. <laughs> We, we could have did some boxing or we could have did some wrestling. Um, I definitely won't make that mistake if or when I have kids. Like, if I have a kid, um, I'm definitely going to put that uh, boy or girl in, in wrestling for sure. Now, Jasmine, you're in great shape. And you're can, – can I say your age or no? Yeah, I don't care. Okay, so you're 50, right? Huh? And you're hotter than most, most – She looks 33. No I mean, you're, you're hotter than no, most. Thank you're you. Old. You're only uh, as young as the people you feel, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah, you had double D breasts uh, or triple D. Did you get them taken out? Double D? double D? Yeah, they were 21 years old. They were old enough to drink. Yeah, I had them taken out for acting stuff, and it just looked really stupid. I mean, <clears throat> it just it really got into my way of booking things, so I got them removed. Um, I have them somewhere, and I just I have a better life. <laughs> I have a great life with them. I'm living my best life ever, but... I mean, I was never into, um, you know, with the wrestling, you'd think they got in the way, but I knew how to fall right, you know, and take all those bumps. I don't forget, I was, I learned a lot of the same show calls, like holds that you discussed before, Journey, like the cross. Yeah. The yeah, so she taught me, she was a glow girl. She taught me very, like, stiff, old school moves. Um, then I took JKD when I was a kid, so... Oh, wow. I probably, between that and being completely out there and insane in the membrane, it's probably not a good idea to have problems with me. Uh, now, I, now, I remember you telling Vince you hadn't done drugs in a couple of years. That was like four years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're still off drugs, right? Totally off? I never have been. I had what, two lines of fucking, two lines of coke when I was at a party like years ago, and that was it. Okay, got it. Because now there's a, the craziest wrestler I've ever seen in my life. There was a guy who, and I know wrestling fans are gonna fucking shit on me because rest, they're the craziest fans. I thought, and I thought MMA fans were nuts. <laughs> like, independent wrestling fans yeah. are the craziest, most dedicated, but there was a guy named New Jack, right? So oh he, God, yeah, it's heartbreaking. So he was a, a, a black guy who was a wrestler. He was a great wrestler. I, th I think he was a great wrestler, but I heard he was like, I watched a couple of his things. He, he was insane. Like, he would really hurt people. Like, one time he actually, like, threw a guy off a, a 40 uh, it, and, and was like proud of it. Like it was it insane. It's like basically, uh, you know, felony crazy horse. It's basically the, the crazy horse of pro indie wrestling where there's like all this talent, but just it's, and there's a, bit, a, a thing of him cursing you out. He's so mad at you uh, because he was supposed to wrestle Bam Bam Bigelow, and you were dating the Blue Meanie, and you gave him the wrong time for an airplane, and he missed the flight. What does it happen? <laughs> okay, first of all, we like we reconcile that like after. Okay. Oh, good, good, good. To say I was dating that freaking lard is like <laughs> it's insulting. Um, it's called charity work. It's called I need a tax write off. It's called you have no self respect to get your fucking fat ass to the gym. He used to beat me, actually. Wow. And that's why I stayed with him when I first got into ECW, because I just didn't want the, um, I didn't want to bring that type of drama into my job. So I have like, I had 18 stitches there. He, bet, he head butted me. And a guy like that wouldn't last in jail, because I'd have a lot of friends that were locked up in, gang, in like gang modules at the time. So um, I had a really good doctor when I went there at the place. But uh, so yeah, the, what were we doing? Yeah, so that that, the ER room, sorry. I was in a class since like eight this morning. All right, so then um, with New Jack, so I ran a wrestling company for like two years, 3PW Wrestling, and you know, we had so much shit going on. New Jack didn't miss a flight, they were delayed, 
And then I got really mad. I think I was hurt more than I was mad. And I was really upset with him and really pissed off. Um, then we, you know, we became friends again, like after that for a while, then when he passed away, it's like, why can't it be one of the freaking Kardashians or like Justin Bieber, or like Machine Gun Kelly or something? But yet they take away, you know, these talented wrestlers, talented musicians. Yeah, guy, I mean, he did throw a guy off. Of, I mean, I think a guy's like Carol. He did, yeah. But it, look, you know what? You know what you sign up for? Uh, like, like that kid who they had to run the IV on in the ring? Mass Transit, that incident. Did you ever see the Mass Transit incident? No, I, I, I don't. I'm not as in like... He, this kid lied about how old he was. He was working a dark match for ECW. He came into the locker room and was like mouthing off to everyone, telling them how he wanted to go over in the match. And you just don't do that. And you should look it up, mass transit incident. And they had to start the IV on him in the ring. Ooh. And that's not a fun thing. Uh, he got hit with the lip of the chair. Um, New Jack was always, God, I hate saying was for him. The worst thing in wrestling is you lose people you have fun memories with. Right. Well, isn't that every you know fun thing? Yeah, and you understand that. It's just really sad. So, um, but yeah, so he passed away. Um, and then you know, it's New Jack. He had like eight justifiable homicides. Uh, we had to get into Canada for a pay-per-view, and I had a oh, warrant for my okay. arrest in Canada. <laughs> Can we slow down for a second? He had eight, he killed eight people. Yeah, it's okay. That was a bounty hunter thing. Um, <laughs> Shit. Huh? I just keep looking at Jeremy's face, and I can't tell if his screen's frozen or if he's shocked. Like it's so no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's he's like, normal. I, I, so so a justifiable. Like, okay, he killed eight. He, he was a bounty hunter. And he killed eight. You know, you're not allowed to kill eight people if you're a bounty hunter. That's, that's well, it depends what they're doing to you. Look, if someone. It's their word against yours. So you, had to to laws, I, with so you guys were hiding. Huh? You were hiding out in Canada with them. No, no, no. I had a warrant for my arrest in Canada at that point, and so did he. So there had a there's a pay per view. This is pre nine eleven. Why, why, why was there a warrant for your arrest in Canada? If you could I, say went, I went to. Um, I left, uh, I was feature dancing at a club. Then I went with some guys that were really nice guys that had a clubhouse. I was hanging out with them. Then I left with one guy on his motorcycle. Then we were, um, I, I was a little drunk. I kept like tapping in on his shoulder. I'm like, let's go there. Let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. Uh, we broke. <laughs> there was someone's house and the gate was open in the backyard with a beautiful infinity pool. So we just went there and started swimming. And uh -huh. someone thought it was trespassing. Oh, well, it was trespassing, but that's not the word. I mean, that's not even like, out of all the things you've done in your life, that's probably not even the top 1,000. Well, we were like both locked up for the night. Anyway, so then I didn't want to go back to court. I was busy. But um, so the warrant like eventually went away. But I was there with New Jack. How are we going to get to a pay-per-view in Canada? The bus, the casino bus. Because they don't really check anything at that time. Right. And if you dress nice, they ask, oh, well, where are you going? Oh, uh, just to see friends for their birthday. We're going to the casino. Well, you're coming to spend money in Canada. Awesome. Have a great night. Okay. So that's yeah. good. So you guys got to the event and it all went well. We told people we swam there, but yeah. <laughs> wow. So you've only been arrested once, Journey, and that was for now. But your, your, your one big victory in the UFC got taken away because you tested positive for weed. <laughs> Stupid. Fucking stupid, right? I, I mean, marijuana is like an essential business during COVID. Uh, yeah. like, legal here. And it's legal. What, what It was in Texas? It was Texas. It wasn't UFC. A lot of people think it was the uh, UFC that uh, took it away, but it was fucking Texas. Now, does that matter? Did you lose money or anything on that? Or? Um, I had to pay a $500 fine, um, which, I mean, I'm... I'm kind of on the cheap side. I I don't want to like give my money away, but I mean it was a it wasn't a big fine or anything like that. Um, they gave me my uh, win bonus, which was good. Um, but yeah, Texas is kind of ass backwards on that one law. Like everything else that they do is awesome. Their gun laws are good. Uh, I I hear that Tesla's uh, moving over there and everything, but man, they're just ass backwards on marijuana. I, I literally just don't get it. I don't know how that's a performance enhancer. And it's not like I was sitting here smoking weed like that week, that fight week. Like, 
Um, I stopped smoking just as I did my UFC debut and just uh, like I did for the Texas one and just like I did for the Flash one in Vegas. It's always like two weeks and then the weight cut kind of just flushes it all out. But because this has a lower threshold than all the other states because of their ass backwards laws on marijuana, I got popped for it. So do you train over at American Top Team in Portland? I train at uh, Impact Jiu-Jitsu. I have it right here. Um, I do uh, some training at ATT with uh, Ricky Simone. I love he's that guy. A, a 135-er, top yeah, 15. No, he's a badass. He, he's both a badass. badass. Did, you yeah, also, he, did you train with Paige Van Zandt and Austin? Because there was a big breakup, right? And that, that whole gym, like, half went – there wasn't a big chill and all that. Wasn't there all that drama over there? Yeah, I think um, I can't. I haven't seen Chell over there since uh, I've been over there. I've heard he still kind of goes over there like me once or twice. Rarely, I haven't seen Austin or Paige in a while. I don't know if something happened between those two gyms. I seen him training at another American Top Team, so I, mean, I don't. He moved to Florida. Florida. She just she just signed with AEW Wrestling. Oh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She just signed with AEW Wrestling. I mean, I don't know what happened between them and uh, ATT. Um, the head coach over there, Fabian Rocher, is, you know, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. Um, nice to me throughout my career. We've uh, had fights at the uh, Roseland, which is a amateur uh, event that we have in Portland. Like, I always yeah. saw it in my um, – is, am- is Portland as bad as it seemed on the news? Because, like, like, it seemed like it was – like, there was riots there, and they were starting their own colony. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I was homeless. I mean, is it? As bad as it is, they say on like we watch Fox News. They, Portland's like a, a third world, a fourth world country. Is it as bad as it is? It's not as bad as I guess it was. Like when the whole BML thing was happening, um, there were riots happening. But uh, right now, I don't think it's as bad. There is a lot of shootings out here. Like it's it's starting to kind of towards uh, turn into like an Oakland, LA type type uh, city, which. Kind of sucks, yeah. It it does kind of suck. Um, I blame it on this whole thing about defunding police. That was the dumbest thing like people could have uh, ever said because uh, I forgot what what the commissioner's name is here. But um, oh, I think yeah. they defund yeah. them a little bit, and uh, you know now we're just kind of seeing the outcome of that. Like there's more. I went to CVS shit. the other day. People were just taking boxes of shit and leaving, and I go and I go to the cashier. I'm like, are you gonna call the cops? They're like, not gonna come. I'm like, so it's a fucking grab bag now? Anyone could just go and just, like, I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I, if I'm a cop, I'm like, hey, you fuck, fuck you too. I, I understand. I wouldn't be that way, but I understand why they would be that way. Um, now, Jasmine, where do you live right now? I live in the most um, progressive city in Los Angeles, in California, called Santa Monica. Yes. Um, my friend ran for city council, and I, I'm actually a weekly commentator, political analyst on <laughs> a very political show. But anyway, so anywho, um, you know, call me whatever you want with my views, but I would just say it's like, you know, the whole, there's a common sense party, yeah. and there's flat out stupidity. Now, I don't know if you guys ever read the book San Francisco, But it's basically a book about how the progressive mindset has ruined cities across the nation. And it starts basically at a local level where we have the crimes and everything going on. And you don't have people with a strong backbone getting involved to stop the crime. So our population is 47,000 in Santa Monica. Our police force was 200. Now it's at 90. So when you make these laws, and I don't we just call them blue laws. Like if Gavin Newsom passed some law, it doesn't affect him, but we have to live by the circuit, by the, the everything bad that happens from it. I, I don't have personal security. He could, he could afford personal security. Same with Garcetti. Yeah. So it's just Republicans like mo- moderates need to get involved at a local level to clean up the street of crime, homelessness, and most of all to lower the business taxes because the businesses around here are dying. Yep. Uh, from COVID and everything else. Now you have crime, you have vagrants with their shit out in the street urinating, then the cops are letting them go. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel, folks. <laughs> the light is this. One cop told me, look, I don't really care what you do as long as I am not there. If you're going to call us, stop whatever it is you're doing because we have body cams. And I, you know, they're good cops, they're bad cops, they're good waiters, they're bad waiters, they're good, they're good teachers, they're bad teachers in every profession. But you can't just defund them because what about someone's grandmother? You, you're saying defund. What if, what if something happens to your grandmother? Well, homelessness is out of control. I mean, 
It's if out I, of control. My wife and I just bought a house. It's in like, it's a very nice house. We, a whole life savings went to this house. Hmm. It's a, it's a nice neighborhood. I go outside. There's someone lying in my, in my thing. There's a, there's a tent next door. Uh, in, in like Woodland Hills. Like, oh. like I can't take my kid to the park because there's people just smoke, you know, smoking crack at the park. I mean like communities of people smoking crack and I can't take my three-year-old to a park. And it's just mm-hmm. like, and, and what am I, what am I, I'm not going to call the cops and these people because their lives, their lives right now suck. And I don't want to be that, I don't want to be unsympathetic to this, but there's got to be some solution where a yeah. child can go to a park. Here's the thing, and I'm sorry, I just have to. So like, now you got me going, okay? This is like every morning I wake up and I go into politics for like the first two hours of my morning. Then I go into this whole crazy thing. Um, so now you're getting me back at this whole thing. So we just, okay, so here's what happens. I actually discussed this on For the People with Judge Herb Dottle the other day. So with the homeless crisis, we have a lot of people that are homeless by choice because they are getting Obama phones. They're getting $600 from the state. So why do I want to stay or go into a shelter or go get help? I don't have to do that. I'm getting shit for free, living off the fat of the earth or the land. And, you know, you get vagrants begging around here. And I'm sorry these aren't homeless people. They're violent. And I yell at people when I see them give them money. I'm like, you're empowering them to come back here. Is that what you want? And there's this one woman in the city council that wants to, like, keep letting more and more of them out. I'm like, where do you live? Because I'd like to put your phone number and address on a business card and hand it out to them and let them go on your freaking front lawn and like with your kids where they go to school and let's see how that works out. I should have like run for city council or something. But anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, so it, it's, there, there are ways to do it. But Santa Monica does not have a homeless um, program implemented. You have to get bigger organizations involved like Amazon and so forth to build these places to keep the psychos in one and the ones that really want the help, there's a Venice encampment, okay? You, you could stay there, like an actual shelter. After 60 days, you get on your feet and you get out into interim housing. Do I think they should put these affordable type homes or housing in neighborhoods like mine and yours? No. Then you, lower my, then you lower the rent here too. So yeah, anyway. You, you might be the most interesting person. <laughs> what? You might be one of the most interesting people. Uh, I, 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 on one hand, I'm wondering why you're single. On the other hand, I can figure out why you're single. Uh, so it's I'm like, a right wing nut job. I don't, I'm not. I'm not, not a right wing right-wing nut job, but I could tell that you're probably. It's probably hard for yeah. you to be <laughs> focused on one guy, but not like that. No, no, no. I, I am. You know, I can be, and I am. But the thing is, with the politics, you're going to. If, if we didn't have all these like things going on right now. I wouldn't be talking like so passionately about politics at all. But why, yeah, but why are you single? You're obviously you're beautiful. Not- <laughs> obviously, great in bed. You, you, you're fun. You, you, you have your your self-made woman or self. You know, you, you got a one-person show. You're you have a crazy background. You're not going to run out of fun stories. You answer your own questions like right there. You know, you answer a lot of questions right there. Oh, were you from New York? Yes, I'm from the uh, Long Island and New York City. I could tell. You know, it's just with people nowadays, it's just, it's so, like, you get people, this is, we're in a very, you know, and personally, politics are 5% of what you are. It's 95% is like how you treat people. And in some of these towns, you get people that just have their ass hurt over um, political views. You know, you get these boys in pajamas and grown adults in freaking pajamas and these are like women and men my own age out there with this, this the hair like this thing. It's like, what, what are you doing on a Friday night? No matter, it's like no one wants to speak to you. Um, you know, and, and then it's just this whole narrative. You know, when you okay, speak- That's why you're single. Journey. <laughs> Journey. You're a good looking guy. You're in the UFC. You came from, I don't know if you have a day job. You're a coach or something, a trainer. Yeah, I coach and do some private lessons here and there. Okay, so you got a good job. Uh, why are you single? You're half black, half white, good looking dude. You probably got a big schlong. Why, why are you single? What's going on? I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> I assume it's because I'm such an introvert. Um, I'm at my gym or I'm at my house or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on a hike alone or something. Um, I don't really have, like, a lot of options to go meet girls. Like, I don't really go clubbing or anything like that. Like I said, I'm, I'm an introvert, so... Um, I just don't see a lot of women. I mean, I'm on Instagram a lot, and I'm on uh, Twitter, I'm on you know Facebook or whatever. But uh, 
Yeah, nothing. <laughs> like, but, like nope. a, but like a dating app. I mean, you got like a 12 pack and you can't yeah, I, you got, you know, get a picture of you with your hand raised in the UFC. You're not going to attract the girls that way? I assume, yeah. Like, I don't know. The, the dating app thing, I don't want to do right now. It, it seems like a desperate move. So I've never gotten past that. You know, that's like a mind block for me. Like, oh, I don't want to seem desperate. So I'm not going to do like the whole dating app things. So like I'm, I'm like old fashioned. I'd rather meet a girl like at a fucking farmer's market or at the, you know, at a Fred Myers or something, grocery store, something like that. Um, or even Instagram. That'd be cool too. But like, I, I don't know. Any, any advice, now what advice do you give to each other? Jasmine to journey and journey to, I got advice for each other. I don't know. It was like, I'm, I'm how, how, how would you help this guy? from um different states but that's not the thing it's like yeah you're all the way in san francisco i'm, I'm not too sure this is Monica, but close enough but but but, but how would but, but how would you help him what, what would you what would you tell this 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 30 well stay off the dating apps first of all okay because there's so many glorified groupies out there who present themselves <clears throat> one way and you know that one like ten dollar sundress could cost you like half of everything for the rest of your life sure. um, you know and you just the thing is i feel as though like especially with you um i had friends that were uh ufc fighters um and you know they <clears throat> they date these girls these women you know you get the whole emotional attachment going but then it's like baby i don't want you to do another fight i'm really scared i just don't know what's going to happen and, and and like you're a dad now you can't do this because then you you know what if we we don't have you anymore and it's just got to be someone who's on that same journey. And you don't necessarily want to date another um, <clears throat> UFC fighter. Uh, you know, I mean, because that's got to be, be competitive. Did you ever date anyone that's another fighter? Did you ever do that? I don't think so. No, I've, no, no I haven't. Um, I'm not really a competitive dude in relationships. Like, if I did end up uh, dating someone else in the UFC and – let's say they were they're getting more wins than me then awesome like you know like bread both of us for sure but uh, i'm not well, well, i mean right now you're technically at zero so any, any win right now would be a zero <laughs> that's not <laughs> nice you can't I'm, 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 yeah. well, he got the win taken away i wouldn't have said that unless he got the win taken away from the wings <laughs> no, I, I, okay i will always count that out when just because <laughs> happened and, and that's when you knock the guy out yeah years. Yeah, it still happened, so I always count that as a win. I even have that on my. I'm, I'm two and three, not nine, three and one. But you know, that's that's Texas. You know, I I, I don't give a shit, but it's whatever. Are you in Texas? I'm in Oregon. Oregon, yeah. Oh, in Portland, yeah. Oh man, that's yeah. that's intense. <laughs> that's real intense. Literally Portland. intense. Yeah. It's actually it's intense. about lunatics. It's very, like, it's actually intense. intense. Actual I, intense. People are just kind of like take it a little bit too far, especially out here. Like, obviously it's, it's Oregon. Not a lot of people are used to, um, you know, gunshots and, and stuff like that. And it's only in like downtown Portland. It's not all of Portland or it's not all of Oregon. Um, but a lot of people are, are, are kind of just way over their heads. This isn't LA and, it, and it's not Oakland and where I'm from, uh, Merced, California. That's, that's originally where I'm from, born and raised. Um, but, there, you know, there's a shit ton of of gun violence and um, gangs stuff out there. I'm pretty sure in the Fresno, Santa Monica area as well. Like, I just get like these people out here in Oregon, they're not used to it. Um, so it's it's just being like drawn out of proportion. They get scared of guns here. You even like people get scared of me. If I have a gun, like say anything about a gun, they get scared. If you say anything about my pillow, they get freaking scared. So, <laughs> and let me tell you, he may, I like his moccasins and I do. And he has an incredible story because he came up from like this whole drug abuse. Like I like people that have stories, you know? Yeah. And people just, they get so sensitive. And I thought Oregon would be the same, but they have the keg, which is good. Is the keg still open? The restaurant, the keg? Okay, probably. I've never even heard of that, actually. <laughs> I, I've never heard of the keg. You got arrested six times oh. there uh, for, uh, no, I'm kidding. No, so, no I'm kidding. I'm, every time, every place we mention, you've been arrested. Every <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, uh, now, now, Jasmine, are you doing your one-person show out here in L.A.? What? Are you doing your one-woman show in L.A.? Lovely question. Um, <clears throat> prior to the pandemic, I had a bunch going on. Uh, I do New York 
it's either in June or September at the cutting room. And then I'm working on some LA dates prior to that. But the whole goal is to do this a couple of times a month. So in a way, the pandemic has been great because I was able to build up a podcast following. Oh, cool. Because here's the thing. When I lived overseas, nobody knew where to find me. Then I came back to this country a few years ago and just worked on like remolding, revamping, like whatever it is and being specific about what I wanted. Um, but yeah, I mean, that show is my life. I've known nothing more than entertainment for 25 years or 26, 27 years of my life. Um, I don't think I'd be very good at like doing an Uber or something like that. Get the fuck out of my car. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I, I can't see that. I mean, it's just, I do this and then I'm, I'm involved very much with wellness with IV infusions. I don't do them because I'm afraid of needles. Um, <laughs> But I, uh, I partnered up with a company that does them, and we do. Uh, it's really been a great thing. We're trying to partner up with a, a boxing gym in the valley, but they go to your house and do it. Um, and you know, they have a lot of like VA. We have a lot of VIP clients. Have you thought about stand-up comedy? I fucking hate stand-up comedy. Every <laughs> are we allowed to curse? Are we allowed to curse? Yes. Yes. Every fucking Jew broad in New York City, over the age of forty that lives on the east side, on my place there is on the east side, does fucking skin. Why do they gotta be Jew or Jewish? What is Jewish? Because that's what they are. It's like they watch Mrs. Meisel. They watch a rock, they watch Mrs. Meisel. I, I, well, Jews have always been in the stand-up comedy. But well, I you mean, guys invented comedy, but, yeah, so, I um, mean, like, but all, it's just that, like, they, uh, every girl does that, every freaking like porn star, ex-porn star tries to do that. It's like, you're freaking boring. Like everyone's doing it. Like Aaliyah Janine, I like her. She's cool and she's really good. Like the comics I have on my show, they're really cool. And most of the time when you get these female comics, like Vonda Carlo, she's another one. She's awesome. They don't do like these, well, you know, my uncle tried to rape me. He put his finger in me. Like you don't, I'm just sick of hearing these stupid rape jokes. It's not funny. And it's just, it's not cool. Then you get these guys that do dick jokes. It's like, I just want to like shoot myself when I hear this stuff. So I don't want to, I cannot be in that environment. Huh? Huh? Uh, yeah, what? I definitely feel the same way. Like yeah. dick jokes and, and pussy jokes, yeah. especially when women hit the, the, the pussy jokes, I'm like, oh my God, come on. Like, I don't know. I, I disagree. I like a really a good dick joke, a good pussy joke. It has to be good. Send a photo if, you <laughs> if, it, if it's not, if it's a terrible, easy, cheap dick joke, it's one thing. But a, a, a one that I haven't heard before or a new twist on a pussy or something or a new twist on a dick, uh, I, I just think that, you know, you have a, a life that, lends itself to a lot of funny stories. Obviously, if you're one person. Yeah. Know. Well, the one woman show isn't necessarily comedy. You could find comedic bits in it, but like if you saw um, Undisputed with Mike Tyson, it's along those lines because you have to tell a story. If you start amusing people all throughout the thing, then they just lose the juice of the story. And like uh, that girl who played Princess Leia, what was her name? Carrie Fisher. She had a really cool show, but she had too many baubles out there. Yeah. I don't do bells and baubles. I have a lot of AV. Uh, maybe three costume changes, but it like I suffer from stage fright. So uh, like Easy E suffered from it too. But like I figured that out. I think I don't know. <laughs> and then finally, uh, I wanted to go see Poison, Motley Crue, and uh, Joan Jett's opening. I think it's uh, Def Leppard is also. But the last time I saw Motley Crue, I, I actually walked out. I went to the hair the hair metal festival, and Poison was great. Vince Neil was so out of shape. And was couldn't even get. I thought he was gonna have a heart attack. Like have her to the first song. I'm like, I don't want to be. I don't. I can't watch him die right now. It was. Uh, have you met Vince Neil and these guys? Can you help get these guys in shape? Because I, I like Motley Crue, but it's embarrassing at this point. It's it's it's. He looks like Ron Jeremy. And it's 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 rough. No. He looks like Buddha, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But did you uh, now, Ron Jeremy? You worked with, by the way. And I knew Ron Jeremy a couple times. No, no, no. Only in a mainstream film. Okay, I saw him in like in the wrestling ring with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did wrestling too. Mm -hmm. Did you have any? Because I didn't know any of these things. Like, great. <laughs> did you have any clue? No, because I was. I used to, when he was at the Rainbow many times. Girls would throw themselves at him. Don't forget, he, I, when I was feature dancing a couple of times, like for three, four weeks, he was with me on the road. He'd do a stand-up comedy routine. We'd share the same dressing room at the club, but that's it. But I see these women going in there with yeah. $20 bills, taking photos with his penis in their mouths in a Polaroid. So 
Shit. The one girl that started this whole lawsuit, one of them, she like reached out to me on Facebook. I'm like, hey, I said, you staying off the drugs? Because I knew her when she was all, she was like glomming on to run, like white on rice. Right. So you. So I feel as though it's a witch hunt. I feel like he's out of it. I'm not defending a rapist. Let's just get that straight. But I feel like if you have one person, it's like the movie Hysteria with James Wood about the MacArthur, whatever it was, the Montessori school. Yeah. It's the same thing. One person gets scared. One person sees it be, oh my God, ah, it's just this whole thing. Then why do you wait so long to come out? Because you're a webcam girl and you got nothing in the real world going on? Like why? Well, he, he uh, yeah, there should be a statute of limitations. I went to a concert with him one time uh, it was me, him, my my girlfriend, and his girlfriend, and we went to see Blues Traveler, and uh, and it was crazy because he was such a good piano that he, he, they would start the show. You think it would be John Popper, and he'd be playing the piano, and then he would pop up. It'd be Ron Jeremy, and then Popper would come out playing the harmonica. Like that was like their bit. People would go crazy. He sat down, and there must have been a hundred people would come and take a picture with him, and he was so out of it, like his his eyes were dead. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like, like, it was, like, that, I don't even, like, that, I'm like, that's why I was confused. I'm like, dude, this, rape, like, I don't think this guy even knows, I mean, not the, the guy that I knew, but who knows? Who knows what happened? Yeah, he looks like he's out of it. There's a, someone took a video of him in an Uber with a girl, and he's just, like, staring into wherever. But I was there when those Finnish girls were there. They were, like, making out with him, taking photos and selfies. One of them was, like, FaceTiming her boyfriend in Finland. I'm like, you may not want to do that, but... He would go and these girls would go in the back with him in the rainbow. Maybe he was schooled a little differently, but I could tell you one thing, like I'm not, this like fourth wave of feminism isn't what I'm used to. I'm going to be very honest with you. And there are a lot of women out there who may have been with Weinstein who knew what they were doing. You, you did what you did and it's called buyer's remorse, you know? And uh, I feel really bad for Ronnie. It looks like he's dying. He looks, he looks like Gandhi, right? Uh, like a, a, a guru. And um, I hope that there is, uh, I hope that some of the truth comes out. If he did that, I feel bad for him. He should just get like, if he did do that to those, any of them. Okay, that's really sad. But I just don't get this whole thing. You know, I, I was thinking about this last night because I, I, we were watching this series on Netflix called Lies and Deceit. Have you guys seen it? No. I haven't seen it, no. You should watch it. It's really good. Okay. Like you, guys, you guys have to get like, like, you hook up with some girl on the road journey, you need to get like a consent form signed because that shit can come back after you. And with girls these days, their narratives all, you know. The one thing about Ron though, that I will say that is gross. If you had food, he would just start eating your food. And then it was his food. Uh, like, cause I'm like, I'm not touching my, that he would start literally start taking like French fries off your, and it was the, I'm like, I'm not, it's yours now. It's like, I'm not. It's, it's here. Can I have some of that? Can I have some of that? Cause he doesn't spend his money. He, he was the he was the cheapest human. He was the cheapest human being. Uh, but yeah, I, I man, who knows? I, but the, what do you think about? Uh, by the way, and then finally, the Cain Velasquez. Have you heard about the Cain Velasquez thing, Jasmine? So Cain, Cain Velasquez was the heavyweight champion in the UFC. Uh, monster of a fighter, all American wrestler. Came from like you know from uh, I think I don't know if he was, he was born in the U.S. I believe uh, is, is Mexican. Yeah, Mexican. Yeah, yeah four year old son. I think his grandma ran a daycare. I'm getting some facts. Think there was a molester that was molesting his son, who was put in jail and then let right out of jail. So he went and chased the guy down and shot the guy, but missed and shot the guy's father. Yeah. Uh, and now he's in jail. This happened last week. Bail's gone. Yeah. They they know and he and he no has, he has Mark Garagos as his attorney, um, who I think represented Michael Jackson, I think, or some uh back in the day and pretty high and it's crazy um i don't know anyone that thinks he should be in jail uh what do you think is going to happen journey to Cain velasquez um I, I assume that he'll get prosecuted uh to the full extent of the law well well there goes journey uh uh jasmine i, I hopefully a journey will come back uh what do you think yeah. i think it's really sad what happened to his child and they're letting people out for doing well, what state does this happen in again texas or where was arizona california california they're letting freaking people out for doing way worse like that those that family in playa vista and a guy hit and run and killed one of them 
They let him go back to New York and an ROR, he never showed back for, J to J for his uh, trial. But all I'm saying is I do not feel as though he should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Because let us say for one example, this was that judge's child who was okay. molested. It's an accident. You know, it's, it, it, it is involved. Did the guy die? No. Okay. No, he didn't die. Sorry, guys. I, That's my, okay. So it's I'm involuntary, fucking... whatever it is, but they, he should not be locked up with no bail. He's not a danger to society. Society presented itself with a set of circumstances in which the law was not there to protect him and his family, and they let this pedophile out into the street. But then again, Gavin Newsom is letting them all out into the street, you know? And that's fine. Do you have a law degree? I feel like you should be a lawyer. Me? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm just very good at uh, doing the Tony Robbins thing. And I just know my, I'm very versed in politics. I tell you, it's like every morning it's the news. Um, and then speaking on these things, you know, would I go down the street and start a protest at the school for stuff? Yeah, I would. They're now, they're now saying minor attracted is the better term used for pedophile, whatever. I mean, what do you think? Of, do you think he's going to get like kicked out of the UFC now, Jordan? Like, what's wrong? He's already, with I mean, he's, he's, he's been retired. He's retired. He yeah. did WWE wrestling for a little bit. Um, I don't know. I mean, look, Dana White, they have a lot of powerful people supporting him. Um, That's good. Those, those guys carry a lot of weight, you know. Uh, Garagos might be doing it for pro bono because it's a high profile case. So hopefully that's the case. And then he's not going to go broke defending himself. Um, I think, you know, if I'm selecting a jury, it's, I, I get anyone with kids, you know, uh, anyone with kids would be who, but if I'm defending, you know, I'm then from the prosecutor, I'm going anyone without kids. So it really, you know, it depends on what happens. I mean, not getting bail is not a good sign. I mean, that's, that's not a good sign. I was actually surprised and shocked like they didn't give him bail. Um, and I think for my personal opinion, I think it was because he accidentally shot the father. Like if let's say he didn't miss and he he, he shot that uh, stupid bastard, um, he, he probably would have got bail. Things might would have been a little bit different, but because they, you know, he fired and it hit someone else that, you know, didn't do harm to his children uh i think it wouldn't went the other other way with bail and shit but i mean like like jasmine said uh you, you, you take the law into your own hands at, at some point when the laws you know not in your favor and we all agree it's obvious like all over the internet we all agree like yeah he, he's kind of right like some dude sat here Melissa's well, children, what else are, what else are you going to do? Like, and you release him? Like, the, the police just release him? Like, that's not fair at all. Joe Rogan made a good point of, like, he should have just went over there and just beat his ass completely. Like, it would have been less time, uh, less time for him in jail. I bet there he would have already built himself out by now. I don't know why, you know, uh, a heavyweight champion decided to take a gun into the situation. I get he's, he's furious and everything, and um, he wants this dude to stop breathing, but he definitely has like the manpower just to do that on his own with his bare hands. Yeah. Yeah, Great. but I feel like it's just this, uh, this is such a bad situation, and I hate to say this. Now that you have a pedophile that's out there in the streets. Right. How soon until he goes after his next prey? Yeah. And when does he, that, that's more of a danger than this guy. And yes, you know, he shot the guy's dad, who's partially responsible for creating this jerk off. And then you're there to protect your son from having sex with these kids. Maybe he was like abused as a child, but I just hope the lawyer, I, I am going to follow it because I, it's society's presentation of the law and how it does not protect the average American citizen. And plus, I was working at a daycare, so he's obviously like, you know, I mean, the guy I went out of his way, like, I mean, not that, and he kind of feels okay, but this guy's a fucking psycho. Like, I mean, he got a job at a daycare to fuck kids. Like, 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 fuck that guy. You know, it's yeah. You know, um, but I where can't imagine him not having an arrow like a, a target on his back at this point. Uh, and I, yeah, I mean, uh, so where can people follow you, support you, uh, Journey? Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter, Instagram at Journey J135. Nice. And uh, Jasmine, uh, where can people listen to your podcast? It's Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair podcast. It's crazy with a K, of course. It's every Wednesday on Apple's, iTunes, and Spotify. And um, 
On Twitter, it's just Jasmine St. Clair, Jasmine without an E, Claire with an E, and Instagram, the real Jasmine St. Clair. Well, thank you. You can all just look up Crazy Train with a K because well, it's you. cool. Thank you both for being on the show. Uh, good luck, Journey, uh, with your fight. Good luck, Jasmine, with everything. Uh, hopefully see you soon. Uh, I'd invite you to a comedy show, but now I'm, I'm like scared to. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you guys are the best, and uh, take care. Thanks for having Bye, us. Man.